Hi there, Year 7. Uh, it's me. I'm back again. Um, and today what we're going to be looking at is strength of acids and concentration of acids. And really I want to look at how the two of them are really, really important to work out whether or not an acid is strong or weak. And what you can see here is uh, the acid inside of a battery. This battery has been uh, destroyed. And inside a battery is a really, really, really strong acid. Um, and if it's damaged or broken, it can leak out, and it's very, very nasty. The strength of the acid in a battery is really, really strong. Okay, so last lesson we, we worked out that pH is a measurement of how acidic or how alkaline something is on a scale from 0 to 14, with 0 being the most acidic and 14 being the least acidic or most alkaline. Um, and there being a middle point where things are neither acidic or alkaline, uh, we call that neutral, and that pH is 7. Now, an acid could be more acidic because it is a stronger acid, or it could be more acidic because it's more concentrated. There's more acid particles in there. And we have to decide which of those is important. Um, things can have the same reactivity, the same acidity, the same pH, and they could be different strengths or different concentrations. So it's really important that we understand the difference between the terms strength and concentration when it comes to acids, and that's really going to be the key thing that I want to focus on today. So what is strength of an acid? Now, the strength of an acid is an unchangeable property that belongs to each individual acid. Each individual acid has a different acidity, acid strength. And we can categorize them as either strong acids or as weak acids. Some common strong acids are things like sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid. Some common weak acids are things like citric acid and ethanoic acid. So, for instance, I can categorize my sulfuric acid, like I said, as strong, and that citric acid, I can categorize it as a weak acid. It is impossible to change the strength of an acid. It is a property of that specific acid. So if you have a bottle of phosphoric acid, that is a strong acid, and you can't change it into a weak acid. Another way that acids can become more or less acidic is by doing concentration or dilution. If you dilute something, what you're doing is you're putting more water into the solution so that there are less acid particles there. If you look at the diagram below, you can see in my concentrated acid that there are lots and lots of acid particles in it. Whereas in the dilute acid, there are less acid particles. The concentrated acid is going to be more acidic because there's more acid particles in the same volume. Whereas the dilute acid is going to be less acidic because there aren't as many acid particles there. So if we call something a concentrated acid... That is almost 100% acid particles. These are very dangerous, and you won't come across them when you are doing uh, chemistry at key stage 3, but you will come across them when we do chemistry in key stage 4 in year 11. So be careful. A dilute acid is normally what we use in the lab. Dilute acids have been mixed with water, uh, and that makes them less acidic. So... Um, uh, that's what we normally give you. And how much we dilute it by is labelled uh, in a, uh, it's a unit that we call molar. Um, the higher the molar uh, a liquid, the higher the concentration is, the more acid particles that are in there. So interestingly enough, what this means is that a strong acid can potentially have the same pH as a weak acid as long as the weak acid is more concentrated. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.